Hi all, welcome to today's lecture about comparing libraries to parse JSON data in C++. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Maya, so I'm coming from uh, Croatia. For us in, I grew up in a small city called Metković, which is on the uh, south coast of Croatia. And I was living there until I finished my high school. Then I went to Zagreb, uh, the capital city, to study mathematics. And I got a degree in applied mathematics. And my first idea was that I will work probably in pharmacy uh, doing some uh, mathematical modeling. But I ended up as a C++ developer. Uh, so my C++ uh, career look, looked like this. Uh, I started working in a creation company uh, called uh, Serengeti for three years, and I was external associate uh, to Austrian company called Fronius. Uh, that was my first experience with C++. Uh, I end with Yocto and Linux and CMake and uh, all the tools that goes together with C++. Uh, and I was working mostly on embedded uh, systems, so uh, just doing, they, they are, uh, they're having solar equip equipment, so it was actually doing some stuff about uh, communication between mic microservices. Then I changed the domain, uh, and I was uh, working as a game developer uh, for a year because they, the Playrix company closed the, the offices in Croatia. And uh, then I found a new job in ABN AMRO, uh, which is a Dutch uh, company, uh, where I am today, uh, working as a software software developer again, but again in the, in the next domain, which is finance, so IT risk. Uh, I'm pretty happy there because of healthy environment and really uh, modern technologies that we are using. One of them is uh, actually parsing, C++, uh, parsing JSON data in C++. Uh, so today we are going to talk about comparing libraries to parse JSON data, but to to actually compare the libraries, we first need to know what is JSON uh, and uh, what is JSON data, array, object, and uh, example of JSON file. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar already with this, but uh, we need to have some basic, uh, basic rules. Uh, then uh, we will talk about parsing. Well, what is parsing? How does it work? Uh, what are the phases of parsing? And uh, uh, main types of parsers. Uh, actually, uh, why I picked this topic is because while I was working on ARM in Fronius, I needed to make a simple uh, parser from scratch for protobuf messages. So it was really uh, challenging, but same time interesting to explore what actually parsing is in, uh, in computer language. And also, uh, we I choose uh, five different libraries to compare, to make a benchmark uh, for parsing JSON data, which are nLoman, uh, RapidJSON, SIMD JSON, Glaze, and Dove JSON Link. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone heard about, for example, Glaze is a quite new library, uh, but we will see their uh, per performance uh, compared to compared to others. Uh, okay, so first is to define what JSON is and what JSON data is. So JSON, as you probably know, stands for uh, JavaScript object, object notions. Uh, it's re really preferred language today because it's uh, human readable. You can easily read and see what data consists of and what uh, what are the what are actually uh, the JSON values uh, and keys are. So um, first, let's, let's define JSON data. So JSON data is uh, uh, represented in the format of key and value. So uh, here, conference is a key, and uh, C++ on the C is corresponding value. And it's always separated by a colon. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, then JSON object is nothing but the JSON data, data enclosed with uh, curly, bra uh, curly uh, braces. So here we have uh, three keys with three corresponding values uh, that are enclosed with uh, curly braces. And also uh, each JSON data is separated by a comma. 
Uh, Jason array uh, is uh, several comma Jason uh, separated objects. So here we uh, have uh, speakers as a uh, uh, JSON array with uh, three different uh, JSON objects. And now we can define what are actually JSON syntax rules are. So we have JSON data, uh, should always be in the key value uh, pairs. JSON data is separated by commas. A curly brace is used to represent a JSON object and a square bracket is used to represent a JSON array. Uh, and then we have a valid uh, JSON, uh, JSON uh, file. Uh, also, uh, as you probably know, JSON data uh, is normally stored in a file with the extension of .json. So uh, here we can have a look at example of JSON file. So we have uh, everything what we defined from JSON object, uh, JSON data, JSON array, and uh, we can conclude that we no now know what JSON uh, data is and what JSON file represents. Also, uh, JSON values must be a string, a number, a object, array, boolean, or no. Okay, now uh, maybe a harder part is uh, to, to actually understand what parsing is. So, uh, parsing is the process of converting text into data structure. Uh, so, for example, if you are going to parse HTML, uh, XML, or JSON, we will get the tree type when we are parsing. For, uh, for HTML and uh, for uh, XML, it's called uh, document object model. Uh, also, we have, uh, we have dependency graph if we are, uh, par if we are uh, parsing natural language, pars nat nat natural language, for example, we can have nodes with, what, with words and the edges between the nodes are going to be uh, their de dependency. And CSV file parsing can result in a list of list of values or list of record objects. And a piece of program that is doing parsing is called parser. So, uh, for example, here we can have some source or input text and we uh, applied uh, parsing on that source text. And we can get either data structure if uh, source text matches the format, or we can get catch an error or return the error. Okay, so there are actually three phases of parsing. A lexical analysis, a syn syntactic analysis, which is actually the critical phase of parsing, and semantic analysis. Uh, we will go through each of these. So, lexical analysis, uh, or it's called tokenization, it takes the code from the preprocessor and breaks it into tokens, which are um, the units in a, in a, in a, that, ca that compiler can understand. Uh, then the output of the tokenization or lexical analysis is a stream of tokens. And then syntact syntactic analysis will take that stream of tokens and uh, do the step that syntactic analysis is doing. So, for example, if we have today's date as an input text, uh, tokenization will take uh, the year, the limiter, month, the limiter, and day, and it will uh, produce the token stream that will have year uh, as 2023 till the day of 28. The next step in parsing is syntactic analysis. Uh, that is the process of analyzing the structure of a given input sequence. Uh, so this is a critical phase because um, uh, it needs to be, so input text uh, conforms to the expector grammar. That's, that's the only um, critical, let's say, phase that needs to be error prone, uh, error, um, that shouldn't be error prone. And uh, the output of the syntactic analysis is actually a parse tree. So, uh, for example, if we have the same, uh, same uh, parsing date, and we have a date sh the grammar rule that the date needs to have year delimiter, month delimiter, and day, 
Then, and we have a, uh, the rule that year needs to have four dig digit number, month should have two, it, there should be the limiter, and uh, they should have two, uh, they is having two digit number. Then parsing process should look like this, and it should match the tokens in the input with the grammar rules. So year must really have, must really be four digit number, then we need to have the limiter, then we need to have month, which is here June, uh, that matches two digit number, and so on. And once we are sure that everything matches, uh, we can construct the parsing tree, which is actually uh, quite simple in this case, because uh, nodes are everything that date needs to have. And uh, in this case, uh, we have the the, the nodes to uh, 2023 till the 28. So we now have a parsing tree that syntactic analysis uh, did. And for the end, uh, we have semantic analysis that actually checks correctness and consistency and uh, meaningfulness of the parse, pro uh, parse uh, structure. So for example, if we take again uh, the input date, we can see the type checking. So for example here, the year, month and date, we can s say that they need to be integers. Also uh, range checking, uh, year should be within a valid range and month should be between 1 and 12. Uh, and that if input, uh, for example, has a month 13, then uh, our grammar rules are not uh, matching the input text and we cannot continue with parsing. Uh, also consistency checking. So uh, for example, we, if we want to add consistency checking, we can check if the day is valid for a given month. So for example, if February uh, have a maximum of 29 days in a, in a lap year. So this is, uh, this is a process of how we, ma we are making a parsers, and there are um, main type of parsers. So uh, whenever some software language is created, uh, it needs to have a set of rules. So uh, let's say that we have fictional program C++, and uh, that that program has a rule that sentence needs to have subject, verb, and object. A uh, subject needs to have article and noun, article can be this or a, uh, and so on. So uh, you, you have some set of rule, grammar rules that you need to, you need to respect uh, in order to, to, to parse uh, an input text correctly. Uh, so for example, if we take uh, an example of the sentence, this conference makes a difference, then uh, if we check uh, if you check uh, the, our grammar rule, uh, this is an uh, adjective, then, uh, then conference is a noun, uh, makes is a verb, and a uh, difference is again uh, adjective and a noun. So th this, this uh, sentence will, in our C++ minus language, will actually produce, uh, will actually match the grammar rules, and we can parse it. So main type of parsers uh, are top-down and bottom-up parsers. So uh, we have a top-down, which name suggests that uh, this starts with the rule at the top. So sentence is equal uh, subject, verb, and object. In this case, uh, this conference makes a difference. Uh, the parser would look at the first rule, so it's a, it needs to have subject, to, and uh, then second, subject needs to have adjective and noun, and so on. And uh, but bottom-up parsers are parsers that are starting from the bottom. In this case, the parser would go to the object, then verb, and then subject. And to make an example of that, uh, this conference makes a difference. We'll go, uh, if we are using a, a top-down parser, so we are going from the sentence to the subject to the article, and then we know that this is a first word, so it's a leftmost derivation. And we are going through the, so we are constructing the tree, uh, the, the tree, the parse tree uh, based on the grammar rules. 
and we can uh, actually parse uh, the the input text in our part in our uh, fictional uh, program programmer like programming language. Also, if we take the bottom up uh, principle, then we start with an empty stack. We first read this. Uh, then we shift the token onto the stack. So on the stack we have a this. Uh, again, we read the conference, uh, put it on stack, and so on. And after that, so uh, after that we reduce uh, using the rule none is a difference. So if you can remember, uh, the none could be difference and conference. So we are using the, the reducing uh, and noun. Uh, Okay, let's say changing uh, on stack, we are replacing the tokens of difference with noun uh, of a uh, with article. Then we are using the rule object is article noun and so on. And the next and the and the last step is that we are reducing the rule using the rule sentence is a subject verb and object. And the entire input our sentence has been parsed and it matches the grammar rules with bottom-up parser. So um, here we have uh, two maybe most popular parsers, uh, top-down parsers. There are recursive descent parser and LL parser. So um, recursive descent parser, it um, corresponds to directly to grammar rules. And it uses uh, recursions uh, to, to parse the input. And LL parser uh, mostly automatically uh, is made from LL grammar. So uh, maybe, maybe the difference between those two is that uh, this, this must be uh, handwritten. And LL parser is uh, automatically made by uh, LL grammatic. And uh, also, uh, for example, recursive descent parser will uh, support widely context-free grammar, while LL parser uh, supports only subset of context-free uh, grammar. So uh, about bottom-up parsers, there are three different uh, parsers that have really the same logic. But a uh, simple LR parser has really small parsing table, and it's good to use with simple grammar. Uh, look ahead LR parser is probably better than simple LR parser for uh, larger grammar, but still it has reduce, uh, reduce a reduced parsing table than LR parsers. But I think that for example, a look ahead LR parser is quite optimized uh, in a way that uh, you have expressive power and parsing efficiency. And if you have really great, widely context free grammar, then you can use LR parsers that are really, really most powerful, powerful here. But uh, because they are having a huge parsing tables, and, and probably because of that, they can really. Uh, they are really good in handling uh, and errors too. So now we can uh, finally come to comparing libraries uh, to parse uh, JSON data in C++. Uh, so my idea, as I said, there is no native solution for parsing JSON in C++. And uh, I was thinking about uh, what library to use in different situations. And it's always a conclusion that uh, you need to have like list of priorities, what do you need? So do you need speed, do you need performance, do you need, uh, do you need to be careful about memory, do you only want something what is simple, uh, what you can really, uh, intuitive API, let's say. And uh, I come up with these five because every, every library here has something that could be a solution for uh, specific cases. So uh, I think uh, I first check what compilers are supported, but it's not much of a difference because I think uh, all the libraries are 
uh, doing a good job in, in that area. Uh, maybe uh, Dope JSON Link is uh, pretty much uh, using newer uh, versions, but others are really, uh, yeah, compatible, I think, with, with, uh, with softwares. So let's start with N Loman. Uh, how many of you are using N Loman, maybe, or? Okay, so, okay, nice. Uh, as you know, they are having a MIT license, which really means you can freely uh, use the software. So you can use distribution. Uh, it's easy to, to read the text license and so on, so uh, that's, that's really a plus. Uh, last verified version was in 2021, which I don't prefer, but uh, it's still uh, okay. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, it's, I, I saw some pull requests and people are really working on the library, but uh, the last verified version was, uh, okay, two years ago, so maybe that can be better. Uh, they really have comprehensive documentation, maybe the best one I see with, I saw with uh, JSON libraries. Um, uh, active development and community support, as you can see, they are really, uh, used uh, worldwide. Uh, it's single header file, uh, modern C++ feature, and uh, for parser, they are using recursive descent parser, which is, uh, as I said, it has its benefits uh, regarding to LL, LL parser. So, uh, what are the benefits of N Loman? Uh, first, it has really simple and intuitive API, you can really quickly uh, get what you need. And um, it's lightweight and header only. Uh, it's only one single header file, so you don't, need to, uh, you don't need any external dependencies, no additional build steps, so it's really nice. Uh, flexibility and extensibility, it means that it supports custom data types and uh, user-defined serialization. And uh, versatility, it means that it supports a variety of data types, including objects, arrays, strings, numbers, booleans, or no. So, uh, as I said, maybe for, uh, if I am looking for a simple API that uh, everyone in my team can really quickly get on, and uh, that you don't need, um, let's say, any schema uh, valida validation. I think this is really nice choice. What are the disadvantages? So uh, first is a memory usage. Uh, if you are working with NLoman, you'll see that it can be really slow. Uh, so it, it uses a dynamic allocation approach to store JSON data. Also, they are having uh, additional memory for dynamic allocation. And uh, when you have really large JSON file, uh, that might not be optimized uh, and you need to do some additional uh, optimization in, uh, in, uh, ma manually. Uh, for example, for very large uh, JSON files, I mean like, uh, if you are working in uh, online advertising industry or if you are uh, having some uh, logs that are just done from, uh, from market uh, in, in a bank or some calculation of, of a risk or something like that, they are really like huge JSON file that needs to be processed and parsed. Uh, also, they, they are having a lack of streaming support, which means that you need, uh, you, you can't just parse the stream, you need to load the whole document into the, into the memory, which is sometimes uh, not in favor of uh, especially large documents, so you need to load the, the whole document even if you don't need to parse the whole document. Uh, and lack of validation, it means that uh, they don't have built-in support for uh, JSON schema validator, so, um, you need to maybe use some other third-party library. Uh, next one is Rapid JSON. Uh, anyone using it? Okay. 
Uh, okay, so it has BSD license. It's pretty much uh, similar to MIT. Only I think that uh, maybe text license is quite bigger and more detailed, but it's, it's freely to use and uh, to, to distribute. Uh, last verified version was really long ago. So it's 2016. Uh, also, I found uh, that it's lacking in certain areas with documentation. Uh, and the parser, it uses uh, SIAX parsing. So it's kind of event-based parsing. So it's, it doesn't parse the whole document when it comes. It makes uh, little events for every JSON element, and then it, par it parses the, the, pars the JSON data uh, sequentially. Uh, and because of that, it has a high performance as, as benefit. Uh, so it's designed really to be efficient and fast. And uh, it, it, it has really great memory efficiency too. So because of the SIAX uh, parsing model, uh, it's, it, it can, so you don't need to load everything into the memory. You just need, you, you can't uh, parse only events that are coming. Uh, also, they are having uh, stream-based parsing. Uh, when the, so JSON data, uh, they, they parse incrementally from a stream or a file which is particularly good for uh, large JSON files. And also, uh, they're having built-in JSON schema validator. So uh, you don't need to use any, any kind of third library for, for, uh, to validate JSON, uh, JSON file. Uh, what I found out, found like maybe disadvantages are that it's maybe uh, has complexity for beginners because uh, it requires good understanding of C++ and memory management. Um, also, it requires users to manage memory allocation and the allocations. But I think in C++, as a C++ developer, we are kind of used to that. Uh, also, it has limited error reporting. So errors are quite... Um, not, not so much informative uh, like some others' libraries, uh, which can sometimes be uh, a big downfall if you are, look, if you are working with, uh, with large JSON files. Uh, SIMD JSON, so it has uh, Apache uh, 2.0 license. Uh, last uh, verified version was a month ago, uh, and it has efficiency of SIMD instructions. That, did anyone use it here? Okay. For Sorry? For all architectures or just SIMD? Yeah, it's, it's for, uh, it, it can be used yeah, on, for, for all, but it's uh, dependent on architectures and platforms. Uh, so uh, what, how does it parse the file? Um, well, how, how did I found the, the library? I, just uh, wrote, I, I, I was googling something, and it was the the big uh, the big announcement, uh, the the fast the fastest library in the world. So it was like two gigabytes per second or something like that, and I was okay. I need to see what is this, and then I first read how they are parsing things. So they use a special technique. Uh, they take the the JSON file. They validate first the JSON file. Uh, then they make a tape. A tape is ki some kind of linear buffer. And uh, they fill the linear buffer, buffer with JSON element and the position of that element. And then uh, they are using SIMD instructions, which means single uh, instruction, multiple data. On that par parallel, so they, they are just having that linear buffer. And um, so everything happens uh, in, in, that, in that buffer uh, in parallel way. And that's why it's really fast. And they even have lazy evaluations, which means uh, that they uh, only parse something when it's requested. 
So they don't parse everything. Just when something is requested, then that JSON element on that position is parsed. Uh, so what I didn't like is poor documentation because it's really hard. To, you need to spend some time to just get into it. Uh, or it's just me. So maybe uh, what are the benefits of the library? It's fast parsing speed, as I said. Uh, so by leveraging SIMD instruction, uh, they can parse JSON really fast. Uh, they uh, use SIMD instruction of the, so they enable the, uh, the, par uh, the parallel processing of data. Uh, and, but that can be benefit and uh, a limitation in some cases. Uh, also, they minimize the data movement, so no additional uh, reallocations, copies, and uh, stuff like that. And also, they support uh, streamable parsing uh, because of the, the whole process of how, how parsing in SIMD JSON looks like. Um, what is a downside? Uh, it's reduced functionality. So, the crea creators of the library were just focusing on fast performance, so they don't have like additional JSON manipulation, JSON schema validation, uh, or any query capabilities. Uh, so, what I mean, what I meant when I said uh, that is uh, platform dependent, so it's it's using actually SIMD support from from hardware and it can show different results in different uh, platforms. So that's something not reliable in, 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 in that way. I think it's uh, sometimes it's really fast, sometimes it may, maybe it isn't. And uh, also learning curves, so you really need to understand SIMD instructions, how does it work, and uh, especially for beginners, I think it's, it's quite uh, challenging to, to to use it. Uh, now we come to the Glaze, uh, also having MIT license. Uh, last verified version was two weeks ago. Uh, documentation still lacking in certain areas, and they are really actively develop, uh, developing. Why I'm why I saying this? Because um, I think maybe even uh, last week some it's. There are plenty of pull requests, and they are just uh, making it, uh, they are really quick in, re in responses, in implementation. They, they wrote like a post on Reddit, and after that, I think maybe a week uh, after, when they hear the feedback of the people, they release new version with everything from that feedback. So it's really like what, it's, it, 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 can, uh, it can be really, Nice to see that people are uh, listening, feedback of other developers. And uh, for parser, they are using uh, a PEG, or a parsing expression grammar. Um, so it's kind of the similar to recursive descent parser. Uh, only the, the idea here is uh, to never, so it, it can parse left recursion while recent uh, descent parser cannot, uh, because uh, recursively descent parser will come into infinitive loop if it comes, so infinitive uh, recursion. And this uh, uh, parsing expression grammar is, uh, is better with uh, w wide, uh, wide grammar in that case. Uh, so that's maybe, yeah, it's it's better solution in in in, J, in parsing JSON data data than uh, uh, recursive descent uh, parser. Uh, it has uh, fast lookups and direct memory access, uh, so they are using member point pointers and compile time maps. Uh, also, they have one string allocation, one time string allocation. Uh, it means that uh, they allocate string only once and they reuse it, so it's really great for uh, performance. Uh, also, they have binary performance, so once uh, the JSON message gets uh, automated, uh, you can just call uh, 
instead of the glaze write JSON, glaze write binary, and then you have a binary format, which means you will be quicker and you will, uh, your uh, data will, uh, will use uh, much less uh, memory. Uh, also, what I liked is uh, error handling. Really descriptive and uh, informative error handling. Uh, every, every time I, I got something with, uh, when working with Glaze, I was like uh, really uh, surprised that uh, errors are so, so good handled. So, uh, what I think disadvantages are, it's quite new library. So that's why I, I even talked to people, they didn't hear about it. Uh, and if you just Google Glaze, you will get a uh, uh, recept for, uh, for some uh, cake. So uh, it's, it has limited, uh, limited community support and uh, documentation really can be better. But uh, I think I wrote that in, in some uh, in some post for, uh, for a library creator and uh, he agreed that it can be better. So I think, again, it's, it's great that they are working towards uh, better documentation and examples. Uh, and the last one is uh, DAO JSON link. So it has BSL license. Uh, also, they are, uh, they, the last verified version was really a few weeks ago. Uh, light header, uh, lightweight and header only. Uh, they have a small community, as I saw that not many of man, not many people are using it. Is anyone here using it? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. And the uh, parser is a recursive descent parser. Uh, so benefits are again high performance, but uh, in a way that it's most closely to rapid JSON. Uh, and uh, it, they are offering flexible mapping, which can be, uh, which can be benefit and limitation in some cases. Uh, also, zero allocation parsing and error handling is uh, is pretty good there too, uh, because uh, again, you you have a, like uh, really nice and uh, descriptive uh, errors. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, as I said, uh, the mapping can be a uh, benefit and limitation because it requires manual mapping of JSON properties to C++ member variables. Uh, and sometimes that means that you need to maintain the mapping for each JSON object, especially if you have something customized, then it's, it, it, can, real, it can be uh, a big downfall in that case. Uh, no full uh, DOM support, which means it doesn't construct a complete in-memory representation of a JSON document. Uh, it's just focus, the, the main focus of the library uh, is actually on the mapping. So, um, what is, uh, well, uh, for me, also the issue was that there is no uh, uh, advanced features, so uh, as JSON querying, as JSON manipulations and stuff like that. So um, after I, I, I saw the, the every, every library and read a lot about every of these libraries and uh, try some uh, programming for, for, each of, for each of them, uh, I made the benchmark where uh, here are the test conditions. So the hardware, the software, the data set was uh, some complex JSON file with nested structures. And the uh, test iteration, I run it 10,000 times just to be sure about consistency. And uh, first results, uh, as you can see, first we don't, we don't have SIMD JSON here because it, it, it just focus on parsing in deserialization. So it doesn't have built-in support for serialization. And that's main, maybe that's a really strong, uh, strong uh, argument uh, for me to, 
when I don't have a complete library to just handle everything what Jason, what I need to handle with Jason, it's really, yeah, I, I'm not sure I will use it. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, the round trip in seconds, uh, and Loman is really, uh, really takes a lot of time. Uh, then uh, Rapid JSON and Adobe JSON Link are pretty much uh, so so close, pretty much the same. And Glaze here is the fastest. Uh, and then I I uh, look at the serialization again without SIMD JSON because it doesn't have built-in serialization. And with serialization. Uh, it's the, the values are in megabyte per second. So N. Loman uh, has th around 38. Uh, Rapid JSON, two uh, uh, 230. Glaze was faster almost two times than uh, Rapid JSON. And uh, though JSON link was now a bit slower than uh, Rapid JSON in serialization. And deserialization, now it comes uh, SIMD JSON. So it's really fast. It was uh, about 500, uh, 500 uh, megabytes per second. Then uh, on the second place is a glaze with uh, 420. Uh, again, uh, in this case, we can see that uh, rapid JSON and DOE JSONs are similar, and NLoman was really slow. Uh, but on some other architectures, I think that SIMD JSON is even faster, uh, because they are really offering, at least what I read was that you can parse it in two gigabytes per second. But uh, again, I don't know which, what kind of JSON files are they complex, or what, what, what was their benchmark when we, they were doing it. And um, the question for me was, when I was reading it, uh, what, if, um, what if order is not uh, expected, let's say. So uh, you can take a look at this. So we have, um, I I'm, took the same JSON file and uh, th uh, then I, I set like values from A to Z uh, that, that were keys uh, in JSON document. And every value, so for example A, has uh, had an array of 1,000 elements from 0 to, to 1999. And then um, that, that, that's, how uh, that's how document looks like. And then I, uh, the, the JSON, uh, then I reverse the order that it parsed the document uh, from Z to A. Okay, so I'm not sure if you are understanding, uh, but I okay, you are noting. Yes, yes, into 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 uh, reverse, and I was really surprised because uh, Glaze was. Uh, Three, uh, about, three th uh, about 340 uh, megabytes per second parsing uh, the document, while SIMD JSON, which was the champion in last round, uh, had only 45 uh, megabytes per second. So I think uh, the order was quite important in that, in that case, and SIMD has really, um, I, I think they are having a huge problem with this because you don't always uh, have the same order uh, of uh, parsing the, 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 the document. And uh, yeah, for me, um, I think conclusion that I, I can make in this topic is that um, you always need to see, okay, what, what do I need? Uh, what my software needs? What, uh, how, how maybe, maybe even how, um, how rare or often you are receiving JSON files, because everything counts in this in this uh, area. I was using uh, nloman for a year, and 
now I switch to Glaze. Maybe uh, you, you, you could see that I really love the library. Uh, and I don't have any major um, limitation or uh, disadvantage of the library yet. I don't say it, 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 ca it can come up, uh, but it's quite new. And uh, I think, yeah, you, you need to decide, okay, what do you need? But uh, for example, why I did like Enloman is really it, because it's really simple and intuitive and it's only single header file, so it's really nice and easy to build. And yeah, that's it. Uh, firstly, let me, know, let me just say that this is the first time that I talked on some conference and thank you for <laughs> having understanding. Uh, and also, um, if you yeah, have any questions or anything regarding this, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I think I really did a lot in that area, so uh, feel free to contact me. Yeah.